on, come on, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment there. Hello there, my friends. Welcome to my safe little corner of the internet. And today, as you can tell by my makeup and my whole look, we're gonna be chasing views. We're gonna be chasing trends, just a little bit. And also just because out of all the superhero films that I've seen so far in my life, this is by far the one that like I've wanted to talk about the most. Like this, this is the kind of the one that like I've thought about ever since I, I first like saw it in theaters. And I've only seen it once, but Ever since I did, it keeps like being in my head and I need to fucking let it out. And also because I've already filmed this video once, but oh shit, I forgot to record. So jokes on me, I gotta do it again. Oh yeah, I'm in my Holly Quinn. <laughs> I know my makeup's not fast, but I don't really give a shit. That's kind of the, the aesthetic anyway, so. All that matters is we're gonna be here to talk a bit about Joker Fila Adieu. I'm just gonna say Joker too because I don't wanna offend like French people, you know? I think they're so cool, I think they're so amazing. Cool. And so sit with me as I try to make sense of this whole fucking film. Which I have to say, I am not the biggest fan of the original Joker. I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm not so much in the camp like, oh, it's like riffing off on Martin Scorsese or whatever. I'm more in the camps of like, well, I just, I wanted to just become something more, like be able to transcend that. But ultimately, it just kind of leans into that and just let that be its whole thing, which now looking back, re looking back retroactively, I mean, that's kind of the appeal a little bit because it's just very simple, right? It's very simple and that's always kind of best thing it's like whenever it's simple but at the same time for me what Joker Fila do represents really well with cinema is when there is a movie that I just cannot even say it's good and I cannot even say it's bad and I cannot even say it's like whatever I, I just have to talk about it and I cannot help but think about it and because it's trying so many fucking things and some of it works some of it doesn't but you know what it fucking tries bro it fucking it fucking tries girls it, it really did and i have to commend todd phillips for that definitely so here's to you todd phillips i have to fucking commend that shot because honestly um i wasn't too interested in this movie but then i heard that it's a musical and that got me interested and the trailers as well like the tra whoever fucking edited the trailer oh my god they deserve a raise because honestly they made the movie look way more sane and look way more comprehensible than it actually is which isn't to say the film isn't too incomprehensible but it the film does struggle with trying to make sense of what it actually is it makes it it struggles to make sense of what it's trying to like become right and that's kind of the, the sad thing about it it's just if the original joker what the, if the problem with that film is just how it doesn't transcend and it doesn't really quite it knows what it is but it doesn't know like what else it could be the problem is this wants to be so many fucking things but it just does not know how to get there right it doesn't have the template that that movie was like that the original film was riffing off on it 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 only has its own wild fucking ideas that just it does not go anywhere really it's a movie that doesn't quite like for me doesn't quite stick the landing but i really do appreciate a lot here and that's what i want to kind of just ramble and talk about for a bit with you Whew. and now that i have that buzz i think it's it's a good time to to just start Letting off some steam, talk a little bit about this whole fucking movie. I'm gonna go grab another can of this because I used this during my original recording and it just, again, that whole fucking recording didn't work out. So I'm gonna go and get this real quick. I'll come back. I tried recording this and, um, yeah, I, I edited up. It turns out I didn't fucking press record. Fuck yeah. I don't know if that's like supposed to be a joke on me or basically fate just wants me to have like two bottles of this and to smoke i think so far like four cigarettes i don't know if that's what fate wants but i guess it's it's my way of treating myself especially because today i fucking completed my book hell yeah i've i've, I've finished my book of five months so i'm very happy about that 
and I'm very elated and I'm very excited and I feel like talking about this whole fucking movie because I've been again I've been thinking about it this entire month. Anyways, let's fucking get back to it. Let's let's just begin with the beginning of the the movie. So we have a whole five minute of like an, a Warner Brothers cartoon, which honestly I feel like that's maybe that's I think for a lot of people that's when they were like, okay, what the fuck are we doing, right? Because it's like even for me, I feel looking back retroactively. It's a really bad way to start this movie. <laughs> like it's a really crappy way because the expectations that you're kind of going into it and you just, you know, what, what, what anybody would expect like going to a Joker movie and then you have this. And again, a lot of the points it's trying to make about, oh, the shadow self. Oh, there's two Arthur Fleck, there's like the Joker and there's Arthur Fleck. That whole thing that's going on there. It feels very redundant and that's kind of the problem with the film as well. It's just, I feel the best movie that could have been made out of both Joker and Fleur Adieu is something in between where it's like, okay, maybe we have to the, the framing of the chord and the musical sequences and everything, but we are also kind of telling the story of the first Joker because a lot of this movie, it links back to that and that's one of its biggest problems. It's just there's so much linking back to that movie, especially with the courtroom sequences. And it is a film that's contemplating about what happens with that movie and in a way trying to deconstruct that whole idea of the Joker. And again, what I really appreciate about the film is that in a way, Todd Phillips is trying to redeem himself. He's trying to take this character that he created in a, in a way that, and has now been idolized and used as a martyrdom and as a figure and trying to use that and trying to just basically say, hey, um, it's that's not the healthiest way for you to go about it, and, and maybe this is not such a good idea. But the problem is just that I feel like it's something that maybe somebody else should have done. It's not so much something that I would think Todd Phillips would be a good person to do, just because you're the person who made that film. So there's a bit of tunnel vision going on. And secondly, I also feel like, especially with how it riffs on like the first Joker film, the problem is just that first film, I feel it's very undefined. I feel like, sure, as, as a movie, it is, it, it's more defined by all its influences and what it's trying to like, you know, kind of imitate and, and be a pastiche of than it actually is as its own thing. So we're basically taking a, a subversion of the Joker, right, of, oh, we're gonna put this ca comic book character into this, co like, Martin Scorsese context. So it's a subversion. So we're taking a subversion and trying to deconstruct that. So in a way, it is a deconstruction of a deconstruction. But the problem, again, is just that, well, you're the person who has done that, so you're trying to do it twice. But it just does not, it's not, it just does not really make for such a compelling thing because it's basically, it's something where I wish, maybe it might have worked more if Todd Phillips would just write a whole fucking essay about it than to like make another whole fucking movie. But that's also kind of what I liked about it. It's just like, it's so ambitious. I love the fact that, okay, and sure, there is the people's joke. Again, I'm, I'm you know, trans girl. So of course I, I you know, heard of that. Like I, I've tried to watch that and just, I wasn't the biggest fan of it personally. But again, even though there is that, this is a fucking $130 million movie. Like this is like a big fucking budget movie. And we're, you, and we're doing that and just to, to use all that money for this. Again, I love I love things like this. Like, I love Babylon for this as well. I, I, I just love big director projects, auteur projects, where it's just like, it's them throwing money and all of the power and all the goodwill that they've built over the years, making commercial hits and critical hits and just using it to fucking make the most crazy ass, like nuts movie possible. And now we're talking about it and now we can't help but talk about it because it's just, there's so much going on here. And I do admit that like, I feel overall as that whole statement, it just does not quite land just because it's very, I don't think it's very committed to that as well. I feel like there's a bit of insecurity there. So because I think, yeah, as an artist, you are probably, I think, Todd Phillips was probably also kind of thinking a bit about how his film has added to that influence and well is that really the only thing that that film really did you know in terms of impact because before previously the Joker wasn't that kind of figure for like in cell communities or whatever but now because of Todd Phillips's Joker that's kind of what he became so I do think he probably was thinking a bit about well was that the only thing that that film really did 
um, which I would kind of argue slightly, just because I wasn't the biggest, you know, I didn't feel so, so strongly about it as a piece of art as a whole. But with this, I feel like at the very least, I could say that it is more more of an, an artistic thing because I feel like there's actually kind of an intention here and there's like a position, there's a stance that he's, that he's taking here it's in the sense of trying to take down that whole idolization and the whole image that has been built for the Joker when in fact we are in fact faced with Arthur Fleck and Arthur Fleck is just a sick man who the world has basically imposed upon him either um, as a monster or as a martyr and again, that's also where I really do like Harley Quinn here, especially in retrospect. Um, I did write in my review, and, and by the way, I feel like if you want like my thoughts more concise and my thoughts more just precise and everything, read my letterbox reviews because these videos are just me rambling. It's, 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 it's nothing else more than that. So it's just me rambling, just me running off my thoughts and everything. But if you want me to just go down to like a good concrete point read my little box reviews but basically what I what I did say there is just I feel like us I love the fact that okay here Harley Quinn is like kind of a grifter where like she's like oh you know she's using this sick man and manipulating him and like making him believe that he, she's in love with him so that he would give her the publicity and, and, and everything and the mythos of you know this whole thing and which at first when, when I when I, did, when I did see the film I did like find that it was a bit contradictory that there were moments where Harley Quinn was almost like I can't say the word but you know like she wanted to go there because of the Joker um, because of Arthur Fleck especially after he denounces that title of being the Joker but now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect I do think that well the way that it's executed is not that good the way that it's, it's, it's executed it's a bit confusing but conceptually I do think that what Todd Phillips was trying to do here is the fact that a lot of grifters, especially let's say in the manosphere or like those kind of toxic big cycles, what they do what they do do there is basically okay. Even if there was a guy that like wanted to grift on another guy, you know, like, trying to grift on another guy that was like basically spreading these things, at a certain point they do have to believe in that, right? They might be aware that oh, actually I could use him to benefit me and myself but at the same time they, there is something of a shared thing going on there right or else they wouldn't have been there in the first place so i do think that that's what phillips was trying to get across that in a sense of like she does believe in this kind of image of the joke even if it does benefit her ultimately even if she wants it to just benefit her she does believe in it to an extent and now that he has crushed it it's you know it now there's just there's no more there's just, there's just nothing there more for her. And speaking of like Harley Quinn, I do want to speak a bit about the musical sequences and everything because I am like a, a musical girly and I do like really love musicals and it is one of the things where after I learned about this film, I, I wanted to go see it for that reason. Unfortunately, that's like where one of, a lot of my biggest problems came in. It's just because, first of all, I'm so sorry, Todd Phillips, you're just not a really good musical director. You're not a good musical director. The way that it's like filmed, it's so cramped and it's just, and the structure of it, the music just going in and out randomly and it's not done in a way of like, I don't know, dance in the dark. It's like it's not done in, in that kind of way where it's like um, kind of linking back to the to reality and stuff. No, 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 there's no transition like that. It's just like, oh, this scene is over, done. Let's go to another scene. It, it feels very jumpy and just like, this does not quite work and also the structure of it and, and how it's placed throughout the film it's just again very haphazard and just I've, I just really struggle with those scenes and actually I feel like this movie overall I feel like if somebody were to take it into the editing room and just chop it down a bit and there's also like I noticed there's a lot of deleted scenes like scenes that didn't make it into the film um, that people have like you know pointed it out especially in the trailers and some of the behind the scene footage I feel like honestly if you were to like take some of those and put it in and then take some things out you'll probably be able to get like a pretty pretty good film here at the very least because like I feel like there's just a lot here where we're very again we're very confused we're not really quite sure on where we're ending at and, and how we're going to transcend that initial conceptual like idea and basis of what the film is so by the end it's again very paper thin 
And again, that's one of the things that I felt which because of that is the musical sequences. And honestly, while I was watching it, and in, in, in retrospect, I actually thought, what if you just take the musical sequences, the little the bits and pieces there that usually just last like a good two or three minutes and you make a whole medley out of it. You know, in the old musical um, movies, like for example, Singing in the Rain or An American in Paris, they would have by the end a climax medley where there's a whole lot of dancing for at least 10 minutes and the music kind of transitions from one to the other and everything like that. What if you just do that? What if you just take those like random like sequences that just like didn't quite mean much and you just add it into like a whole medley like by the end you know I maybe kept the one uh, the asylum you know the first one with um, Phoenix and I think I remember also there was one that they filmed but they didn't use which is for Lady Gaga at the stairs keep those where they are and also at the courtroom keep it where they are but after the explosion or something make a whole fucking medley out of it I honestly think that might have actually been kind of kind of epic but <laughs> but now by the end, we're just kind of haphazardly sprinkled in, and, and again, I, I noted this in my little box review, but I feel like what Phillips was doing is just hammering down a very like repetitive point, which is that, okay, and this is where I really struggled with the movement, it's because basically it's just hard to care about what's going on here, because first of all, while by the end, yeah, Arthur Fleck renounces the fact that he's Joker and oh my god, it's so tragic, right? It, you know, he ends up getting killed and everything and it feels like the film is trying to be a tragedy almost. It's still kind of hard to feel so sorry for him because, well, okay, if there's no defense of like a split personality or whatever, then okay, Arthur Fleck is just a very sad, very ill man who fucking murders people, who fucking kills people and, and made a whole fucking problem for the city and also there was like the whole court scene doubles down on that with you know the people that fucking came in and, and tell the courtroom just how much they've been traumatized and hurt by his actions so it's just hard to care about Arthur as oh he is and like yeah the things that happened to him is very unfair but at the same time like you know it just does not justify you know murder of course and it's just like well just so it's just hard to care on that basis alone but also I feel like the film, what it's trying to do here is trying, it's trying to be very middleman about the fact that, okay, we want to, we want to see this from a very distance view, right? We're trying to not be too deep into it. We're trying to, at the very least, be able to see that, oh, Holly Quinn is like manipulating um, Arthur and everything, right? But at the same time, for the musical sequences and for all of that to work, you have to have passion behind it. You have to have some sort of belief in it that actually maybe she is in love with him and Arthur and this is gonna be a whole great love story so you gotta have that too for for the whole musical sequences to work for it to not feel so distant and, and feels like it's basically stopping the movie for the sake of stopping it you have to have like some sort of belief and some sort of passion in it. and I wish I could feel that I wish I could feel it right but you just don't because the film again is very undecided on that so either you'll be very cold about it and you just make us see step by step very detailed of how you know Holly Quinn is manipulating our deflect or you put us in the position of you know um, of our deflect where it's like well oh is she actually kind of in love with me or is she like what like give us a bit of a position you know for us to like believe in i'm kind of scared right now i don't know what's going on there but anyway i don't know like but just give us something of a position something for us to stand on for any of us to be emotionally at least like compelling and also just as it goes on i really do like the beginning portion of the, of the movie just being just it being set in arthur no just it just it being set in the asylum and just like seeing how the musical sequences there how it happens around those like tight cramped walls and everything i feel like and also like the the relationship that arthur flex has with you know the, the, the guards where they're like they're both kind of wishing he would be better but also they they're also like really they, they still hate him right it's very try it's trying to be very contemplative about it but at the same time it's a fucking musical, so I don't really, I'm not, again, I feel like it's trying so many things, and by the end, it is very fucking miserable, and like, I do love the fact that this is like a $130 million movie that's like, so fucking miserable, like, it's, I, I've never seen a comic book movie that's like, this depressing, and I kind of love it, but then there is like, a certain point where it feels like it's just doing a lot of these things for shock value, like, for example, I'm sorry, but like, as somebody who, 
this year went to you know the mental hospital to deal with the fact that I was like sexually assaulted to have that happened in the film like I, that was like the moment that I hated the most because it just felt very unnecessary and it didn't feel like it added much other than oh let's just feel so let's feel bad for poor Arthur like oh my god like feel, let's feel bad for him like he isn't he like so sad and, like again as I've explained with all this character so overall and especially by the end there's a lot of ideas here that I really admire and I really think like if you were to if somebody else would have made it or if it was just done in a different way or executed in a different way it could have been pretty good but again I feel like as it is it, it is made two or three years too late it's made way too late and and just you can feel that you can feel like there's a lot of good ideas here but the spark that made that first film what it is it's just not quite there and it's not there in the sense of oh the film is rejecting it or denouncing it but it's just it's not there because you're basically trying to you know throw throw it at the wall and see if it sticks you're not exactly aiming for it you're just like throwing and seeing where it might land and just seeing where it might go and by the end that's exactly how it feels like it doesn't feel like okay we have all of these elements that cohesively points to this one direction no by the end we are basically kind of ending things we're like okay we have these things and we're gonna end it there maybe you could go and think about it or whatever and i do end up coming home and thinking about it and thinking about it a lot and all of these ideas and just how what it's trying to do and all the music and everything and, and just dear god it makes me a little frustrated and it makes me a little pissed off but at the same time i really again appreciate a lot of stuff here and I do enjoy it I do enjoy the fact that I sat there and I watched all of the Joker fans or whatever and their face like kind of frowning and like just just seeing them realizing that this is gonna be a movie that's gonna fucking tear them to pieces there's something about that that I do <laughs> I statistically I do kind of think it's a bit fun even if ultimately coming out of that I again struggled with a lot of things here and I just there's definitely a better movie here there's definitely a better fucking movie here and that's always very frustrating when you can see that in a film where it's like if only you had just committed and you have just limit yourself and you just keep things a little bit simpler and you just find a straight line to go through and you're not going like so fucking nuts with everything that like this just it feels almost like purposeless if you could find something there like it it would have been it would have been at the very least like something that's compelling right because as it is as it is i'm very interested in that but at the same time i feel like i had to do a lot of lake work as well for it to like for it to like i don't know again i'm i'm, I'm struggling here i'm really struggling to fucking make sense of it i think that's probably the title of this video just me trying to make sense of the fucking joker um so this is why i look the way i do now but so, so ultimately, my point is like, go see it. I would say honestly, go see it. If people are gonna say don't go see it. I'm gonna say fucking go see it. Just because you're gonna end up, I think, thinking about it a lot. And and I have a feeling that in the future, it's probably gonna become some sort of a cult classic. Just because there's again, it's such a wild swing and a wild like completely unpredictable and just like unpredictable but also while you're watching it and it's very kind of obvious where it's going but at the same time you just cannot predict that this is what they're going to choose to do for a joker sequel so it's like kind of it's kind of mesmerizing in a sense it's mesmerizing and it's bewildering and it's disorienting and you just i yeah so i would say honestly you might you might get something out of it if if even if you were to, especially if you love like depressing like fucked up movies and like just movies that's gonna make you feel like horrible the fact that they fucking spent 130 million dollars on this i would say that's good enough <laughs> you know i say that's good enough to why well, you should go and see it like there isn't a lot of depressing miserable movies out there that's like this big budgeted and this like ambitious i would say like trying so fucking hard for all of this stuff to, to just be pieced together and it just does not it does not at all but my god are they really trying mr todd phillips you're trying so hard oh my goodness 
I feel like this is something where I'm probably gonna still think about it just a bit even though I'm trying to use this as a way to like get it all out there and no longer think about this movie but honestly now that I'm like here and talking about it I feel like I want to go and see it again just because it's like I need to see it to fucking believe it that this actually happens um, so yeah again the music the musical sequences if you're like a big musical girly like I don't think it's it's gonna really satisfy that impulse you know if you are, are like but at the same time it's also kind of interesting I don't know if you're in this for the Joker whatever I think you're you're going to get your heart crushed I'm so sorry you're gonna get your heart crushed but too bad but I don't know if you're like me if you're like me and like this is something that interests you especially with cinema where it's like you're watching it and and you just want to talk about it like it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or anything you just want to talk about it and it makes you think and it just makes you like just you, can, you just cannot stop thinking about it if that's something that like is very important to you I swear to you you're not gonna leave the theater and feel like you waste your money like this is something where you're gonna think about it for quite some time because it's just hard not to think about all of what this is trying to be and what it's trying to do and how it completely like like fumbles it but at the same time in a way where it's kind of like this makeup I think this makeup is a very good me like metaphor for this entire fucking film actually if you hate superhero movies go and see this if you, if you hate it fucking go and see this because you're either gonna because even if you come out and you hate it still you are at the very least going to not forget it at the very least you're going to be like you know what actually this movie makes me kind of gets my brain working more than the other one so I would say if that's very important to you again go fucking see it uh, I'm rambling a lot I feel very tired but today is a good day because today I've completed my book I completed writing my book and Claps to to Mr. Phillips for trying so hard with this film. Yes. Um, yeah. So if you really enjoy me rambling like this uh, for however long I have, and um, just me being me, whatever, with my makeup, dressing like this, smoking, you, you, you know, if all of these elements and film and, and books, if all of these elements interest you, uh, definitely subscribe, give this video a like, uh, and yeah, just thank you for being here with, with me tonight, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget, don't you ever, ever forget to smile. <laughs>